Hey, I'm Damian Lewis. We're here at Dubway Studios in downtown Los Angeles. I'm a mixing engineer, recording engineer, and producer. Some of the people I've worked with include Rihanna, Katy Perry, Driver Era, Lennon Stella, the Wood Brothers, everything from pop to R&B to hip hop. I brought a session from the Driver Era called Nobody Knows. So let's check it out. I'll show you how I set up my session and how I use the ID44. So throughout the course of any given week, I find myself at all different studios over LA. Often on pop music sessions, I have a producer in the back of the room who's working on a beat, who is sending me a stereo input. I'll also have a mic in the booth. We'll have an SM7 in the control room for references, and we'll have a guitar or a bass ready to go in here. So I really needed a four channel interface that provided all the IO that I needed and sounded great, portable, and quick to set up. So the ID44 allows me to keep everything on an input, a dedicated input, and everything's ready to go in Pro Tools at any given moment. I love having two DIs on it because I can have my bass and guitar plugged in and two headphone jacks. There's surprisingly not a lot of interfaces out there that have two headphone jacks because you're typically making music with somebody else. Whether you're collaborating with somebody or in my case when I'm mixing, I really like to have my Bose speaker set up on the second headphone jack. That way whenever I want to, I can just flip it on real quick, reference a small speaker, which is super handy to have on a dedicated set of outputs. So let's take a look at my session. I'll show you how the ID44 integrates and we'll go from there. So typically when I get a song to mix for the first time, the first thing I do is open up the session, make sure everything's there, make sure everything's playing back and then organize. As you can see, I color code pretty much everything um, and it's the same session to session. That way I always know if I'm looking at something blue, it's my program drums. So I work from the top down, meaning that this very top track is going to be my reference mix that the artist provides me followed by the print track. So everything's going to end up here after all of its master processing, and this is where I export my mix from. Then I have my master faders. This is the main master fader, my all vocals, my all instruments, followed by the drums next. So in this case, they have a live drum set and some program drums. The live ones are all in red, and all of the blue tracks are the program drums and percussion. Then we have our bass in orange. All of our synths are in red. Our guitars are green, our effects are this kind of purple pink color, and all of our lead vocals are pink. Down at the bottom are all my effects returns. This darker green set are dedicated to the vocals that end up at the all vocal bus. And these lighter green ones are all instrument effects that end up at the all instrument bus. I just found over the years that I prefer to not have intermingling effects. If something is dedicated to the vocals, I like it dedicated to that effect and I want to process it as a group at the end. So here you can see my drum tracks. They're all going to the live drums aux with a couple different types of plugins on here. All the stuff you see in active are things that I just like to have on deck ready to go. I'm not necessarily using it, but I like to have it there. And sometimes I'll switch through many different plugins through the course of mixing till I settle on that sound. You also see that the program drums are feeding a corresponding bus. Again, several different options for plugins. In this case, just a little bit of compression and EQ going on there. Uh, something I got into recently is using VCAs a lot. So sometimes I don't like to use redundant buses, meaning that if I don't have a dedicated group of instruments I'm trying to process with an aux, but I want some control over that, typically with volume automation, I'll just use a VCA. So that really freed me up to not use redundant aux tracks, but still retain control over everything. And that way I can do small instrument rides over all my groups at the end very easily. So when I get a song to mix, the first thing I do is listen to the reference mix. And having multiple sets of outputs with the ID44 is really cool because I can route their reference mix out analog three and four and my mix out one and two. So if we switch over to the mixer and hit play, you can see we're getting both my mix on one and two and the artist reference mix on three and four. So that way at any point during the song, I wanna switch over and hear what they sent me, just a single click there keeps it really easy. So during the course of a mix, I use a variety of software and plugins to process most of the sounds, but from time to time, I do feel like I need something a little more analog. So having a dedicated set of outputs sent to a reamp box to use guitar pedals or maybe a guitar amp in the control room is always really handy. So in this case, I wanna do a little reamping to the bass. The stem that they sent me is already really good um, and it's got some growl on it but I wanna add just a little bit more cut to it. I wanna just go ahead and make things a little nastier and then use that on a parallel track to blend into the original bass. 
We could easily do that with plugins. I do have all these great pedals from Earthquaker that just do something a little bit different. There's something about having that tactile knob under your hand and there's something about the pedals that just make me manipulate it in a way that I find unique. First thing we'll do is I like to make a copy of my bass track usually because I'm going to be blending in this effect with the original bass. So I'll make a copy, in this case a mono one, and then we're gonna route it to output three. On the back of the ID44, we're coming out of analog output three into our pedal chain and returning into input number one. Now we're not going into the combo TRS XLR input, we're actually using the return. That way we're avoiding the mic pre and going directly into the converter and avoiding any other circuitry. So we'll create a new track to print our bass back onto. And we'll just name it Bass Effects. Our input's already set to one. I'm just gonna go ahead and route this to my instrument bus as well, so there's no delay. Something you'll also wanna note is you'll have to flip over to the ID44 Mixer app and make sure that output three and four is set to DAW through. Now we can hit playback and go ahead and confirm that we're seeing this signal. So you'll see it hitting DAW3 here in the mixer. And then if we put this in input, there it is. Now we can go ahead and dial the sound in. Much better already. We a little bit of slap. And then when we're ready, we'll go ahead and print this back in. So another really cool feature of the ID44 is the scroll control. By pushing the ID button here on the front of the interface, it allows you to essentially automate any parameter using the big knob on the front. So in this particular song, we have a big filter sweep that happens going into the last chorus. And you can do that with a mouse, but I've found a far more elegant way to do that is actually use the scroll control wheel to draw in your filter automation. So you'll go ahead and enable your automation for the filter and make sure you turn automation into touch or write mode on the track that you want to automate. And then finally hover over the parameter that you want to automate. So we'll go ahead and start playback and then you'll see I'll use the scroll wheel to draw in the filter automation as the section comes up. Just as simple as that. So I've found that using the scroll control to enable and automate parameters is just a far more organic way to get some tactile feel on the control rather than just poking around with the mouse and drawing automation points. I also like to do it on effects returns and sends sometimes for like a delay throw or a vocal throw. So the way that we work has changed a great deal over the years where we used to be tethered to the studio. Now we're constantly on the move. I might be working in a big studio one day, I might be in a hotel room the next day, or I might be simply in someone's house the day after that. So finding an interface like this that gives me all of the IO options that I need, it's super easy to set up. It's fabulous sounding right out of the box, was a real game changer for me. So I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I hope you picked up a few pointers along the way and hope to see you around the studio. Nobody.